Yeah, g'day. Chai here again. Um, been away for a couple of weeks, but now I'm back. Just been playing around with some transmit code. Um, so I want to do some more playing around with that. What I want to do in this video here was just show the impact of the low pass filter um, for the audio mic coming in. So what I'll do here, I want to do a comparison. So we've got the SDR, so again the yeah the SDR radio for the Teensy setup. Um, currently on 3650. Um, what I've done here, I've got the audio coming out, that's quadrature audio, into the U2 SBL1s. Again, our quadrature clock signals coming in at the carrier frequency, and then the output of which I've got just simply paralleled up, and then that's going through a low pass filter into the 50 ohm resistor. And then I'm using SDR Sharp, a commercial SDR program there just to monitor the output, um, which is that. There, just sort of uh, just across the 50 ohm resistor. What I've also got here this is this yellow one here that is coming from the commercial radio, so that's also tuned to 3650 um, into a dummy load. And uh, I just wanted to show on the commercial SDR Sharp program um, how similar the two low pass filters are for the audio side. So what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to um, set this up, sorry about all the reflections, but I'll just zoom up there. That carrier you can see coming through there is um, it's quite a sensitive radio and it's picking up the quadrature um, carrier frequencies to the two SBL1s. Um, that's not actually in the output of the SBL1s, it's the input. So uh, when I come to make up the actual transmitter itself, I just need to make sure that that's not actually leaking into the input of the, the PA side. If so, I'll need to do some filtering. Anyway, that's what that is. So what I'll do for a start, I've just got a white noise generator, which I'll turn on and I'll first transmit on the uh, the Kenwood radio, and then we will do the the Teensy. So we'll just turn this on, and we'll key up. So that's uh, lower sideband. See, my voice is coming through there in parallel. Lower sideband, if I flick that big radio, to upper side band, that's coming through there. And back to lower side band. The grey area on the SDR sharp there is set for 2800 Hz. And what I'll do now is I'll just key up the S, the, uh, the Tensi radio. And you can see there that the software low pass filter is not too bad actually quite happy with that and if I just flick the discrete that triggers the code to go to upper side band that's the upper side band there and then back to lower side band so uh, that's not too bad actually um, I don't think at this stage I'll play around with that um, what I might do is just go ahead and make up the, the transmitter, get it on air, and we'll start doing some on air um, some on air checks. So that's the what's the plan there. Um, next steps I think will be to basically start getting this ready to go into the box. Um, got a couple of relays there which I'll use to switch uh, we'll share the output of the SBL1 between what will be the, the PA side and then on the receive side coming in from the antenna through the RF amp. Uh, on the other side of the SBL1s I'll need to get my hands onto a, uh, a double pole double so again, uh, yeah, double pole double throw switch so I can switch um, the audio uh, between coming out on receive or going in for, for transmit just to sort of share the two SBL1s between the transmit and the receive circuitry. Uh, the actual box itself, I'll go with what I've been using for quite a bit now, which is these sort of plastic containers. Um, they're quite small, um, so when I'm sort of going tramping, they're, they're nice and small and easy to take away. And what I, what I have been doing is, they obviously go this way, but I use them upside down, and then it's just a matter of cutting um, some copper board uh, to fit in, and then you can basically just tack on the, uh, the circuit cards like I've always, like I've always done. Um, I'll reuse this one, this is an old radio which I'm no longer using. I'll keep this divider board here. On the left hand side will be the power amp. 
So I'll just probably use this old J-Bot which I've used before. Um, that uses the old BD-139s, so I've got four of those, two in parallel. With a couple of 2N3053 um, drivers, which works well. So all of a sudden that... Oops, easy. Let's turn that alarm off. Um, so yeah, so I'll basically just build up into this. Uh, the good thing is, with the Teensy, half the... This is the the, uh, the transmit and receive side. I, uh, I don't need, for example, that microphone amplifier sitting back there. Not required, because the Teensy has an inbuilt mic amp, which works really well. Um, same with the power amplifier sitting down there. Uh, don't require that. Uh, there's, there's, there's enough drive coming out of the, of the Teensy for that. Um, I'll just have to work out a way for the volume. I'll probably go with a probably a couple of toggle switches, and I'll just use some discretes to to drive the the volume up and down. Um, and obviously these these mixer boards here are no longer required because uh, all the mixing is now done in software. Um, 53, 51 will be kept. Um, the OLED screen I'll keep. Great little screens these. Um, really super small. High vis, or in terms of um, being able to see them in, in sunlight, and uh, work pretty well. Um, but I don't need the uh, the, the Arduino board there because it'll be uh, narrow teensy. So that'll be the footprint. Um, like I say, nice and small, compact, um, and certainly easy to use. Okay, that's pretty enough for now then. So I'll keep you posted. Um, anything else you want me to sort of specifically look at? Again, just let me know. Um, otherwise I will be going on uh, another trip coming up in a week's time or two so I'll be away but uh, in and around that I'll try and um, keep playing around and if something new crops up which is of interest I will certainly um, make another video but for now I think software wise uh, we're looking pretty good and it's just a matter of really pulling it all apart redoing it nicely in the container um, and doing some on-air checks um, and I think at this stage I'll stick with the two SBL ones, and uh, maybe another iteration of this I'll uh, I'll go with the with the Taylor detector um, and modulator. But at the moment that seems to be working quite well, so I'll stick with that. Uh, and just for interest's sake, I know this reflects pretty poorly, but I'll just very quickly bring up the code just to uh, Tensi. It was. One um, just to quickly show uh, what that code looked like for the low pass filter. So, as we can see here, let's go past the coefficients for the filters. I'm going to zoom up on that and I apologize again because it never really turns out too well, but never mind. Um, as you can see here, the input on the transmit side this is when I go to transmit, all this, these connections get enabled. Uh, the audio inputs now going through this transmit low pass filter using the 2800 Hz uh, coefficients. The output of that filter um, gets shared, so the, its output goes to the Hilbert transform uh, for the minus side, and also that same filter's output goes to the Hilbert transport for the plus. So that again, that starts to set up creating uh, the quadrature audio, which eventually gets fed, fed out of here. Um, and just as a recap, all the summer here is doing is just uh, inverting one of those Hilbert transforms um, by 180 degrees, so basically inverts it uh, for creating the lower side band and the upper side band. So that's all I wanted to do there, just quickly show uh, literally how you, you know, what is that, two lines of code, and you've now uh, inserted a low pass filter. So uh, nice and easy. Anyway, that's probably enough now, I've been rambling on enough. Um, again, keep you posted, otherwise please let me know if anybody else is trying this. Um, and I'm still really interested to know how to make this little baby here create quadrature outputs down at 3.5 MHz. Um, I have seen a commercial board that's been pointed out to me which supposedly does it. Um, I don't know how they do it because um, with the library I'm using I can only get down to 4.5 megs. But I'll be very curious to know. I could always make this into a, uh, a 20 meter radio or a 40 meter radio, but um, at the moment I'm quite keen to keep it on, on 80 meters. Um, so I'm stuck with having to use this arrangement here to create the quadrature, but that's fine. Anyway, that's enough for now. I'll keep you posted. Otherwise, uh, thanks for listening, and uh, I'll say 73s.